Now, uh, I think I would also like to thank the speakers because I've only heard very nice words uh, on our Core and More report and the initiative that we took, you know, uh, what, three years ago now, uh, Mark? Uh, so that was good. And, and hearing all these nice words, I think, showed that uh, at the beginning, you know, we started the right debate. We're not quite sure. And the first you know, reception, I think, of the report was not as enthusiastic as today. So it takes time. You know, these kind of ideas, I think, need time to mature. But now, I think, I'm really convinced that we did the right thing starting this conversation. And we're doing the right thing continuing this conversation. And you can count on us, actually, to continue. So, you know, going back to my notes, uh, when I first heard the piano this morning, which was you know, a bit of a surprise as well for me, and, and reading uh, the title of Hans' uh, speech, you know, times are changing, I really thought he was going to sing. Uh, but you didn't sing, Hans. Uh, however, I think what you've said was really music to my ears, if I may say. Um, well, first of all, again, the kind words for our paper. Uh, and, and, you know, your comment that you found it inspirational. Well, that's good. That was exactly our objective. So I think, you know, we're on target on this one. But, but I think also one thing I was very pleased to hear was the very positive chemistry with integrated reporting. I don't know whether uh, our friend Richard is still in the room, but uh, I, I think, you know, it was very good to hear that. And it makes sense. And it was also reminded, I think, by Adri, uh, but at the end of the day, making a profit is not enough. It's all into the how. And financial performance is only the translation of other activities that involve uh, the use of the six capitals. So, you know, to answer uh, Richard's challenge that he raised to us this morning, I think what we've said uh, at Accounts of Europe was that integrated reporting was uh, the most promising initiative in, in that space of innovation uh, in the field of reporting. And we also said very clearly, I think, that we were not you know, uh, proposing a uh, competitive alternative, that way that there was no competition. And I think if you add up these two elements, uh, it's very difficult to be more positive in a way. Uh, and I would just add that personally, since the very early days when Paul Druckmann, who actually at the time was the chair of our sustainability group, and if Paul is on the internet, I'll say, hello, Paul. Uh, it all started with you. Uh, I think we were very supportive, and I've always been a great believer, I think, in integrated reporting. So, you know, we're all together on this journey anyway. And, and it's Mark, I think, who started talking about a journey, I think, and that's, that's exactly where, where we are. Uh, but I think we've got to be cautious that it doesn't turn into a quest for the Holy Grail. Uh, because at times we're all looking for something, but we're all looking in the same direction. But I've heard, you know, many, you know, play with words on our core and more concept, uh, you know, core and no more. Okay, you mentioned this one this morning, Mark. But I now have learned the German version of core and more, which is less and less, or maybe same and the same. I don't know. And, and I think same and the same is even more worrying than less and less. So uh, we, we got to be, you know, uh, careful. But the reality is that in practice, I mean, very often it seems to me that what we're facing is just more and more, uh, because that's what's happening. And I can understand the reactions, uh, you know, uh, in Germany of saying less and less, because the reality, I'm afraid, very often is more and more. And, and what a lot of people are calling for is very often more and less. And honestly, that is really difficult to provide. So I think we really have to, to uh, manage expectations here. Now, coming back, because I don't want to make this longer, although the pianist has gone, so maybe I have all my time now. It's still there. OK, no, that's OK. I was not calling for you. Don't worry. Uh, you know, I, I think we made it very clear that with this report, we wanted to launch a number of questions. And we said from the beginning, which is, I will agree, very easy, uh, we're asking questions, we don't have the answers. And, and that seems to be a quite successful theme, huh? because everybody followed up on that. We're asking questions, we don't have the answer. And then, uh, I think, with our call for action, we saw something of a similar dynamics, like everybody was playing hot potato, I think, in the room today, saying, you know, someone has to take the lead, but not me, thank you. Okay, someone else has to take the lead. 
Uh, and and uh, I, I think that's, that's also interesting, this call for a leader and you know, full harmonization and having something that really fits within the box, which listening to our friend Sandra made me think that we're still looking at the world in a very top-down manner rather than looking at ecosystems as it is today developing. So maybe there's also something you know, we, we should think about uh, in this respect, because nobody has the magic bullet and nobody's going to solve it. And as Massimo, I think, uh, uh, who, who I understand now owes some copyrights uh, to Patrick uh, for his, his uh, slide, uh, I think made the key point, I think, for today, which is that it is a collective responsibility. Uh, you know, if we want to move forward, I think we all, absolutely all in this room, have a role to play. And, and of course, it's easy uh, to make, you know, jokes on the role of regulators and lawmakers. Yes, of course. Uh, and I think, Andreas, you pointed to this very, very well. Uh, but if you put regulators aside for a second, I'll come back to regulators, don't worry. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, I think we have to think carefully about the role of lawmakers which I think, you know, at times, although we very often undermine, I think, their role when it comes to innovation, and we always kind of see lawmakers as, you know, stifling innovation rather than enabling it. Well, there are quite a few examples where actually they've been instrumental in creating innovation, you know. For instance, today, we would not be talking about all these innovations, so we would not be uh, using you know, our smartphone and, and looking at this conference on YouTube. Uh, we would still be using the piano, because that's a very old innovation, uh, without you know, the European Commission taking the lead a few decades ago on the liberalization of the telecom market. Things would just not have happened without a huge political initiative and a huge push from lawmakers very often not to the like and the taste of national uh, companies and national lawmakers, but at least this liberalization created the space uh, for innovation. And I think that's exactly what the role of lawmakers should be. And, and you know, when we've been working on uh, this, uh, this series of Cogito papers, uh, I, I think we were always very keen to find well, to think about, you know, where is this room to innovate that we need to create? Uh, room to experiment. And I think there are basically two ways. Um, I mean, maybe there are others, and you'll tell me, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of lacking more inspiration here. I think there are basically two extreme ways. One is what we did with the telecom market decades ago, and it's just deregulating and opening up the space. I think the other one is providing a safe harbor it's creating a protected space where people can experiment. And that's exactly you know, what is behind the lab uh, that uh, all, you know, our friends from the FRC have been talking about and have been using and promoting for a number of years. And that we think you know, should be a very useful tool uh, at European level. Now, let's quickly look at the other players in that space, because I think we do all have a responsibility. And there is something for standard setters, and I think it's really you know, a need to allow innovation, to provide flexibility and focus on principles and outcomes, and maybe also resist the calls, including from a lot of accountants, uh, to always provide more guidance and more details and more books and more pages, okay? So good luck with that, by the way. Uh, I, I think there's also a role for preparers, which is indeed uh, to use, you know, these uh, space that we could provide them in the lab to experiment. But they need to have the courage of experimenting, i.e. in reality, to respond to the demands of markets and stakeholders because that's where everything is being driven, I think. There's a big role for auditors, you know, without talking uh, yet on the issue of auditability on which we will follow up. But I think it is also important that auditors, you know, base their work on exercising professional judgment and do, by doing this, support innovation. The problem is that they can only do that if audit regulators, supervisors, allow them to do so, i.e. if audit regulators do not amper innovation 
by sticking to a compliance approach, to a tick the box approach that actually will prevent uh, auditors to play their role and will impact the entire chain. So in practice, I think our suggestion of a lab uh, to provide that space to experiment is really instrumental. But again, who's going to take the lead on that? Well, I think Patrick made an interesting suggestion on multi-drivers bus, which I think is particularly interesting uh, from someone coming from Paris, uh, where I understand you know, uh, uh, cars will be banned in 2024 or something like that, and we will have self-driving buses on the streets. So not multi-drivers, no drivers at all. Uh, but the problem is that, you know, Again, the lab will only happen if everybody listens to investors and stakeholders. We need to get more user-centric. Again, I think the top-down model that we all have in mind is gone, and we should realize that. So at Accountancy Europe, I think we took the lead to start this debate. We took the lead also to propose a European lab. Does that mean that we, again, need to take the lead to host uh, the lab? Well, I don't know, but why not? If we have the support, and if you know, uh, the European Commission, the standard setters, you know, all the players in that space actually do say that someone has to you know, play that role, and that you know, there is a need for a big initiative to get the lab up and running, and the sooner the better. So I think there has been plenty of jokes uh, made on, on songs. I had noted along the day a long collection of jokes on, on songs title, but I will spare you this, I think, uh, and I would prefer to leave the last word to the piano. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you. Thank you.